A few people have emailed asking me about how to resize and prepare their images for web viewing or projecting. So I thought I would do a very short instructional video on how to do this properly. So let's start by opening this image in Photoshop. So this is the full-size image in Photoshop, and you can see it contains uh, multiple layers. And it's actually a rather large image. We can uh, take a look and see how large it is. So it's uh, about 8,600 pixels, pixels in width and about 5,800 pixels in height. So let's say you want to prepare an image that's 1024 by 768 pixels. That's a pretty common size. This means that if it's a horizontal image, the length of the image should be 1024 pixels and let the height fall where it may. And if it's a vertical image, the height should be 768 pixels and let the width fall where it may. So let's see how to do this. Step number one is always going to be to duplicate our original image so that we retain the original untouched. We don't want to change the size of our original photo and lose all that data. So to do that, we come over to Image, Duplicate, and we can take our file name and just put the word Resize next to it. You can name it whatever you'd like and press OK. And now we have a copy of our image. We can go back to our original image and close that out so we tuck it safely away. Step number two is going to be to flatten our photo because that's just going to make the resizing go much faster, particularly if you use plugins or have multiple layers. So to do that, we're going to go to Layer, Flatten Image, and you'll see the image is now going to become flattened into one layer. So now the next step is going to be to actually change the size of our image. So we're going to come over here to Image, Image Size, and that opens up the Image Size dialog box. Let's start at the bottom here. The first thing we're going to do is make sure that resample is checked. Why? Because by shrinking the number of pixels in our image, we're asking Photoshop to reinterpolate those pixels in order to make the image still look right, although there's far less data in it. And right next to that resample tick box, we have a drop-down that asks us how we want Photoshop to do that interpolation and resampling. So the most straightforward way here, since we're reducing the size of the image, is to choose Bicubic Sharper. If we were to choose Automatic, Photoshop would know that if we're reducing the size of the image to apply Bicubic Sharper, and if we were enlarging the image to apply Bicubic Smoother. But let's keep things simple and straightforward. We know we want to reduce the size of the image, so we're going to choose Bicubic Sharper. The next thing to make sure of is that this chain link is switched to on, which it is when these little gray bars are here. Off looks like this. But we're going to keep this on. And what that does is ensure that the width and height ratio is kept the same, so that when we change the number of pixels in one dimension, it automatically changes them in the other dimension to keep the image looking right and the ratio the same. Let's change this information all to pixels. First, I'm going to show you a way to do this that leaves people somewhat confused because it gives them the wrong answer at the end. It seems pretty straightforward to just type 1024 in for the width, and that gives us our proper width in pixels with a resolution of 240, although typically for screen viewing or projecting, we want a 72 pixels per inch. Truth be told, for viewing on the internet, the resolution actually doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is the number of pixels across the screen. But we're often asked to submit these images at 72 pixels per inch. 
Now watch what happens. If I change the resolution to 72 pixels per inch, we're no longer at 1024 in the width. Of course, we could go back and put 1024 in and we're okay again, but I'm gonna show you a way where you won't run into this. And the way to do that, if we start over, is to start from the bottom up. So we're gonna start resample, by cubic sharper is our method, and we're gonna work our way up. We're gonna change the resolution to 72. We're concerned mostly about the width here because it's a horizontal image. And now we're gonna change the pixel width, the pixels in the horizontal dimension to 1024. And we're always gonna check this before we click OK to make sure we're right. So we have a width of 1024 pixels. We've let the height fall where it may because the image is gonna stay at the same ratio. The resolution is 72 pixels per inch. We're gonna resample with bicubic sharper. We're good to go and we're gonna click OK. And we've now changed the size of our image. I'll put that up to 100% pixel per pixel. And you can see here is the final size uh, of our image. So now we just have a few more little housekeeping steps to do. If we wanted to sharpen our image any further, now would be a good time to do it. But then in order to keep the file size at a minimum, and because it doesn't really help to have 16-bit images on the internet or for projection, we want to make sure that our image is in 8-bit, which will markedly decrease the file size compared to 16. So how do we know how many bits our current image is? Well, if you look at how Photoshop displays the title of the image, it says RGB 16. It's in the RGB color space uh, at 16 bits. The other way to know is just to go to Image, Mode, and you can see that the image is currently 16 bits per channel. So we would just want to go to 8 bits per channel, and we'll click that, and now you can see that our image is in 8-bit format. The last bit of housekeeping that we're going to need to do if we're planning to use these images for either viewing on the web or projection is to convert the color space to sRGB, which will really display best uh, on the Internet. So how do we know what our color space is and how to convert it? We go to Edit. Convert to Profile, and the Profile means the Color Profile. And we can see that the source, our image, is in the Profoto RGB color space. And we're going to pick a destination space, and we already have sRGB here. You can see there's a number of profiles we can choose, but we're going to choose sRGB. These we can leave at default using the Adobe Engine and Relative Colorimetric with Black Point Compensation and Use Dither. We don't have to worry too much about that. And just click OK. And now our image is in the sRGB color space. And we can go ahead and save it. And we can click Save As. We can pick a spot. We'll put it on the desktop to save it to. And we're going to save it as a JPEG because again, for viewing on the internet or for projecting, that's really going to be the best choice in terms of file size and quality. And when we click Save, we can pick a JPEG quality. In general, you don't have to go to maximum quality to get an image that looks really good for projecting or on the internet. You can go to something like 8 and we can click OK, and our image is going to be saved, and we can close it out. We don't have to necessarily change save this because uh, this is going to save the TIFF or Photoshop file. Uh, I'll just say no to this, and we're good to go. Our image in JPEG format in the exact size that we want is now going to be saved on the desktop. Thanks for listening.